Hello friends, maybe you have purchased some of our RCPs because you want to shade your Blackmagic cameras with hardware and not software. So there are multiple ways you can connect them. The most obvious way would be to connect each RCP with an SDI return feed to your camera. But maybe you want to use Fiber Solutions or the Atom Talkback converter. So we wrote a document about the strategies you can adopt uh, to control cameras um, from Blackmagic Design. And in this document, you will find some topologies outlined. Let me just go to this page. And one of them would be that each RCP is connected to an ATEM switcher. If you have an ATEM switcher like this one in your uh, topology, then you, you simply might want to connect these over Ethernet to the ATEM uh, software or switcher. And uh, one of the advantages is if you enter the software, you will be able to see all the settings the RCPs um, are sending to the ATEM switcher reflected on the software control panel. That's great. The, the problem is there are limits to how many uh, connections you can uh, have on an ATEM switcher at any time, depending on the model actually. So what we have here is the software control connected to the ATEM switcher, right? So that's one client. Then we have, let's see, this panel, this one, and this one. So that's three of the, f the RCPs here for camera five, seven, and eight. They are connected too. So let's just confirm that. So if you look in the software here, I said uh, this would be camera five. So as I move the joystick, you can see I'm moving uh, the, the virtual joystick. And the same goes for this one, uh, seven, and camera eight. So if I pull this handle, you see nothing happens with the camera that would have been PI1. Okay, so clearly we have one, one, two, three, four clients connected. So uh, the remaining five RCPs are not connected for this reason, because I um, simply took it out of the switch. So uh, if we plug it into the switch, we will see one of the panels, that would be this one. This one came online. So now we are shading camera three as well camera three, and you'll see I'm shading camera three. I can still do it along with cameras over here, five, seven, and eight, but still camera six, camera four, camera one, and camera two are offline. They are not being shaded by anything I could do to these handles. This would be one of those. Uh, okay, so Clearly, we had a limit of five connected simultaneous clients to this one. Now, here's a uh, funny little thing. What happens if I close down the ATEM software control? So one client will leave the ATEM switcher, giving room for one of these to pop in. Okay, so I am now closing the software panel. And there we saw this one, camera number six, is now online because we had now a, an empty space for a connected client, which this RCP was the first one to, um, uh, to actually uh, take over. Okay, so of course we have a solution to this. And if we look at the document about topologies you can adopt, you will see that um, in a setup like this one, we have uh, ATEM clients like the software control. You could have a broadcast panel too. Uh, you might have other Skyhawk controllers all connected to an ATEM switcher and then the RCPs, of course. There is this significant warning that the number of connected clients is critical. And depending on the model, it will be five to eight. We find that um, eight clients would be on one of the two ME models, while five is apparently what's the case on, on the smallest uh, models. Now, uh, and we have the overview right here. So ATEM Television Studio, five clients. The ATEM proxy solution is uh, the, the one that I'll present in this video. So that's the solution to the problem. And that is, as you can see from the drawing, that we take uh, a physical piece of hardware um, that runs some software that lets all the RCPs connect to it. And then to the ATEM switcher, this will appear as a single client. You can get it both as a piece of software running on a Windows operating system using the official SDK from Blackmagic Design. So um, 
it's um, it's it's like a Windows application we developed using that SDK. Now, you can also have it on a small piece of hardware that you can just plug into your infrastructure somewhere, and all it takes is an Ethernet cable and then, of course, power. And then it has to be configured so that the it, it knows the IP address of your ATEM switcher, and then it must itself have the IP address that these control panels think the ATEM switcher is on, because for these, they will connect to the ATEM proxy uh, not knowing that it's actually not an ATEM switcher. They'll think it's an ATEM switcher and work with it like it was an ATEM switcher. But in fact, it's just a middleman between the real ATEM switcher and the panels. So this is what I'm, I'm going to set up now. And the first thing we need to do is to change the address of the ATEM switcher to have this uh, working well. We could also change the address that these panels are communicating to, but it would be easier to just change the IP address of the ATEM switcher. And this is what this is set up to as well. All right, so um, the ATEM switcher currently has the default uh, 240 um, IP address. This one has the IP address 240 as well, and it will try to communicate with an ATEM switcher on 241. So if I change the IP address of the ATEM switcher to 241, and save, all right. And now I need to reboot various stuff, right? So, and, and the, the quickest way to do this would simply be to just... J <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't shut the power off during your presentation. Mm, it was not only my control panels that lost power. <laughs> Embarrassing. Well, um, what you can see on uh, the... The picture now is that none of these RCPs are connected. These are not connected either, even though they have a small message that the system is, well, basically unconnected. I doubt you can see that on the video feed. But none of them are connected right now. The ATEM switcher is up and running. And let's open the software control. So we can... And we need to enter the new IP address. And there you see the software control. So we go to the camera section so we can see how the RCPs are shaded in in a moment. So what we want to do now is to take the ATEM proxy I had just before. It's plugged into Ethernet already, but it needs power. So I'll fetch some power. There we go. Plug it in. So now it exists on the network. It is booting up. And we'll wait for it to boot up, and then we should see eight control panels magically connect to the ATEM proxy, which will be the middleman for them to the actual ATEM switcher. And we'll still have control with the software control panel, and if you had a Blackmagic broadcast panel, no problem at all. And there we see it, right? All of these RCPs are now connected to the ATEM switcher without losing uh, client slots in the ATEM switcher. And that's the reason for discussing the ATEM proxy at all. So um, we'll see camera one, camera two, camera three. Maybe you want to see uh, from the top view here. One, two, three, four, five. And I need to scroll. Six, seven, eight. I can make adjustments to other parameters as well. Now they are so far away, I can't really see them. But in this case, I'm adjusting. You see the red um, lift um, and so forth. Well, I think the point is proved. The ATEM proxy allows you to have virtually unlimited connected controllers to your ATEM switcher without getting into problems with the max client connections that the switchers themselves can take.